This morning I have with me Dr. Asela Abedira. He is a community ophthalmologist attached to the Ministry of Health and is also the president of the Association of Community Ophthalmologists of Sri Lanka and the secretary of Karuna Trust, Karuna Community Eye Care Center in Maharagama. And this morning we are going to discuss about community eye care in Sri Lanka. Welcome to Coffee with Dan, Doctor. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, let me start by asking why vision is important for life and how vision impairment affect life. Uh, good morning to everyone and uh, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk to the people in this country. And as we know, the, the vision is very important. Everyone says that uh, vision is precious and eyes are precious and you need to protect your eyes like more than anything else. So with, uh, I would say the, the most important, important sense of the body is vision. So when you imagine that you lose vision and just, just uh, put a blindfold around your eyes and try to walk, so it's impossible. So vision is that important. Vision is uh, one of the most important senses to move around, learn, and uh, to, to live day-to-day -day life. So that's why vision is very important. Now, we know that when we do not have a proper vision, that would uh, lead to blindness. So how blindness and vision impairment affect the society and the country? Yeah, actually, uh, when you uh, uh, consider, when you think about the the statistics, uh, the numbers uh, in the world and uh, Sri Lanka, I would say, uh, let's uh, uh, talk about the world situation, global situation. There are more than 39 million people are totally blind in this world. And, and unfortunately, the more than 90% of these blind people are living in the countries like us, developing countries, Asia, Africa, and Latin American countries. And 80% and, uh, of this blindness is avoidable. That means that this would have been prevented or would have been treated. So if we have treated or prevented, 80% of this blindness would have been prevented. And uh, most of the people are uh, blind needlessly, unnecessarily. So in, even in Sri Lanka, more than 150,000 people are, persons are blind. And uh, four times of that number is having kind of low vision, reduced vision. So the, uh, the problem is uh, uh, serious. There's a, there's a big burden of uh, blindness in Sri Lanka and uh, uh, all over the world. When somebody is, uh, imagine somebody is blind in your family. So he's totally blind. He can't move around. He can't go to the washroom, toilet, and he can't eat his meal. So there has to be somebody else to take care of that person in the family. So uh, in turn, uh, it, 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 it becomes a burden to the family. And we do, even though we don't think that uh, our blind father or mother or grandmother, grandfather is not a burden uh, for the family, but when, when it, as a true fact, it's a burden. So when, when you have many people in the blind, in, uh, uh, as blind people in the society family, so uh, at last it, it becomes a burden to the society. So, so if you can get out of blindness, if you can treat and uh, uh, be, uh, make that person no more blind, it will affect the society uh, positively. So that's our aim. Now, when you say that uh, in the whole uh, global regions that uh, in f these countries like uh, in Asia, Latin America and the African region have more tendency towards blindness, are there any factors like environment or any other that affect this uh, scenario? Yeah, it's uh, many factors, many factors, uh, uh, mainly the socio-economical uh, background of the people. Uh, in developed countries, uh, the people have ready access to health care, specifically the eye care. When there's a, there's a, a problem, then there's an eye a disease or anything, they can... Uh, quickly access to eye care services, say like somebody has to, uh, uh, an injury to eye or a disease, something like cataract in the eye, they can uh, uh, quickly go to the to an eye, eye surgeon or an eye clinic and get treated, operated, medicated, and they can get rid of the condition uh, without a delay. But 
a country like say like in India or a, a, a undeveloped country in Africa the eye care services are scarce they are very rare they have to uh, travel hundred, hundreds of miles kilometers to get treated by that time the, the, uh, it might be too late to get their vision restored so there's, there's a similar not not I mean it's not like an African country but but there's a similar kind of bit bit similar situation in Sri Lanka in some 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 areas of the country say like in districts like Andhradapura district in Vav, like Vavnia Mena people have to travel uh, hours to get uh, treated I mean, then then uh, the conditions are getting worse, and uh, I mean the, the diseases may uh, aggravated uh, beyond the uh, the the scope of treatment. So that's why the people are getting blind without treatment. So the, to overcome this problem, IKEA should be there in the community level. So that's the that's the aim. That's the objective of all these uh, processes. Now, at what age should a person test his or her eyes, and how often thereafter he or she has to continue this process of checking uh, the vision? Actually, eye examination begins uh, at birth. When when a child is born, a child is tested by a doctor. Uh, specialized in uh, ne- i mean uh, take care taking care of small babies neonates so that doctor look at the eyes he he, he doesn't do a, a complete examination but with with a torch he just examine whether there are gross abnormalities uh, gross uh, changes in the eye then he refers that child to a to a person eye surgeon or or a eye, eye care professional so uh, Uh, after that, uh, the patients are looking after the child, and they notice any anything, any abnormality. Say, if if patient the per, the baby can't recognize their parents at a distance, then parents usually complain the doctor that the, my child can't see me. He doesn't smile at me. Then the parents are uh, they they are prone to take the child to the doctor. Then doctor diagnose something, and the the the, the treatment goes on. and at the preschool more specifically at the entrance to the school uh, there's a system that uh, the child vision is tested at grade 1 under the school medical inspection program child vision is tested at grade 1 grade 3 grade 7 and grade 10 so if there's a problem the child will be detected as having something wrong so it can be a squint it can be a vision t- uh, defect that uh, the child doesn't see far and uh, the child is referred referred to an eye clinic and treated or given spectacles and uh, next stage is uh, uh, when child enters to university or when uh, the the youth uh, uh, joins a job government job or a private uh, employment usually they need a medical certificate when they take the medical certificate the, the checking vision is essential so at that time also the vision is checked the next stage is when you are 40 years old that's the most important the kind of uh, 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 demarcation or i would say the 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 step of uh, life that uh, the vision and eyes have to be checked at 40 years you can have diabetes you can have glaucoma you can have cataract you can have uh, all the diseases are not 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 even eye the all the systemic diseases are beginning at 40 years uh, at the 40 years of age so you are tested uh, for uh, near vision defects at at 40 years you get uh, presbyopia that is we we, we call in singhali hatali sendriya so you are you are beginning to uh, uh, experience difficulty in reading so uh, at 40 years you are checked for those diseases and by uh, after that every two years we recommend you have to come back to the doctor and get check your eyes you can develop in between 40 42 44 you can develop any disease one of the any of the diseases which i have mentioned earlier so after that you two years you need to be checked then at one stage you will be detected as having cataract then uh, the other other treatments uh, we have to do now doctor you being a specialist in community eye care what is the gravity or magnitude of the problem of impaired vision in sri lanka and the world 
Yeah, that's what I I, I was mentioning and uh, earlier. That, uh, actually, I I, uh, I was mentioning some figures that 39 million people in the world and 150,000 people blind in Sri Lanka and um, half a million people are having some kind of uh, uh, vision defects. And in addition, we have more than one million people who are waiting for a cataract operation. So that's the situation basically in Sri Lanka. Now, some pay, some say that. Uh looking watching tv or uh, spending more time uh, near a computer opposite a computer or a laptop can cause um, uh, various types of uh, blind related uh, uh, things uh, or effects uh, why people are blind and usually impaired with these causes yeah actually the, the for the first question there's no proof that uh, watching TV or watching, uh, looking at the computer can cause blindness. But in small children, if they spend a lot of time within close environment, say like rooms like this, smaller rooms like this, classrooms and not going out for to play or anything, just looking at computers, they are, they are getting a tendency to be short-sighted because they are looking at, sh sh I mean, short distance things all the time. So they, 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 they will have to wear spectacles to see if, uh, it, if this uh, habit is going to be continued. So, so there's nothing like that, but uh, uh, there are other reasons why, we, why people get short sight, I mean, uh, uh, low vision and blind. The first uh, thing, the first reason to, the, the most important reason is uh, cataract say like uh, we have done uh, I mean the Ministry of Health has done a, a blindness survey to, to detect how many people are blind in Sri Lanka two years ago and we found that uh, uh, s uh, two third of those who are blind are blind of cataract. Now uh, talking again about this watching TV um, I have come across situations where some children used to get closer to the TV uh, in watching, is there is some fishy thing here? Yes, that's a very that's a very important observation a parent or, or any anyone should make. Uh, uh, when a child goes near the TV uh, to watch TV, that means child can't see far. So that's why he is moving closer to TV. What what usually parents do uh, is that uh, pulling the child back saying that you that the watching TV can harm your harm your eyes so child is compelled to see the TV at a, at a distance but child goes back so that's an indication that child doesn't see far that that that's an indication that's uh, something which you have to be alarmed to take the child to an eye clinic or an eye doctor he need glasses now moving back to our discussion on community eye care in Sri Lanka uh, I would like to know, doctor, whether in the Western medicine, do you recommend any kind of exercises uh, to uh, people in keeping their vision good? Yeah, thank you. Uh, no, actually, we don't recommend uh, exercises on regular basis. We don't say like uh, to to keep maintain the physical f physical fitness. We do we recommend exercises to do do this exercise in the morning every day. We don't have exercises like this. But when uh, young people, small children, and young persons come with uh, some certain eye conditions, the uh, most. Uh, uh, commonly reading difficulty when 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 they get eye strain and eye pain headache while reading we examine uh, to uh, detect whether they have a problem in the muscles in the eye sometimes the each muscle is muscle each eye is controlled by six muscles so when these muscles have uh, defects uh, the short i mean the defects in the function we recommend an uh, exercise with a pen to to look at the pen at a distance and uh, taking it to closer to eye and uh, moving it backwards. That exercise we give for children who have uh, uh, reading difficulties, uh, not otherwise. You mentioned earlier the symptom of cataract. Uh, what is actually a cataract? Is it a disease or some other type of a defect? Cataract is an age-related uh, phenomenon. It's not really a disease. 
uh, the reason for cataract the cataract is the clouding of the natural lens of the eye there's a lens in the eye it's like uh, the shape is like any other glass lens but it's made up of cells living living lens so as uh, when you pass your age i mean 50 years 60 years uh, i mean uh, commonly after 60 years the the lens of the eye uh, gets gets discolored uh, denatured then the light doesn't pass pass into the eye through the lens then uh, your vision get gets impaired then the cloud, cloud cloudiness the, the the opacity of the lens get increased uh, you are getting uh, more i mean gradually you are get you are becoming blind that is cataract so can cataract be prevented uh, cataract uh, it's there are there are some uh, uh, researchers going on and uh, various researchers scientists say different things by eating uh, na- more natural food uh, and not exposed into sunlight and not not exposed in exposed into various uh, uh, harmful rays cataract can be prevented that's kind of a uh, uh, research uh, finding but in the common common world we are exposed to sun we don't eat 100% natural food and we we, we do a lot of things so, so cataract in, in general meaning cataract cannot be prevented it happens so but most important thing is cataract uh, the blindness due to cataract can be prevented uh, can be prevented you you i mean no, you know you need not to be blind because of cataract there's a way of prevention that is a surgery that's an operation you remove the cataract uh, lens with cataract and you implant a plastic lens uh, which is very clear so so immediately after the operation you get the the vision you had uh, before the before you got to get cataract so that that means 100% vision restoration uh, even if you have cataract uh, I was curious, what is glaucoma? Glaucoma is, in, in uh, day-to-day terms, common terms, glaucoma is uh, called eye pressure. Actually, the eye is a globe. Eye is like a fluid-filled balloon with a thick uh, capsule. So, uh, the fluid in the capsule exerts some, exerts some pressure to the, the surrounding structures. When the eye, the pressure of the eye goes up, pressure of the eye uh, becomes high it uh, causes pressure to the nerve of the eye we call optic nerve which connects the eye to the brain when uh, the the nerve is uh, compressed uh, pressurized the, it becomes uh, i mean gradually nerves now now becomes uh, 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 kind of uh, it's dying the nerve cells starting to die then you get impaired vision and uh, at last you become blind you become blind so it's uh, the the nerve damage to the uh, nerve of the eye with the pressure of the eye that's called uh, glaucoma there is general uh, perception that uh, uh, diabetes result in a glaucoma situation is this correct uh, according to the research statistics, uh, there's more tendency of glaucoma among people who have diabetes. But diabetic doesn't cause glaucoma. That's very clear. And uh, one one more word about glaucoma. If you are diagnosed as having glaucoma, you need lifelong treatment. Eye drops. Then by, by uh, lifelong treatment, you can uh, prevent uh, you becoming blind because of glaucoma. But uh, the... the already lost vision cannot be restored why people need eyeglasses yeah uh, need for eyeglasses are called refractive errors or vision defects so either they see they don't see far or either they don't see closer or they don't uh, have the ability to do fine work like reading so we 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 categorize uh, these vision defects uh, uh, short sightedness far sighted sightedness and presbyopia that's uh, reading inability so uh, the reading problems start at 40 years uh, 40 years of age and uh, short sightedness usually happens uh, during childhood the the small children uh, preschool and school children they start to uh, uh, see difficult I mean experience difficulties in uh, looking at uh, distance objects so in every instance we have to examine them 
and test for eyeglasses and prescribe eyeglasses. With eyeglasses, these vision defects, the, these refractive errors can be overcome and they can have normal vision. Uh, is that true that uh, eyeglasses can improve the eyesight uh, with uh, use? Sometimes in, in uh, smaller children, when, when, when they are given the eyeglasses at the correct time, their vision can be improved. If they are not given eyeglasses at the correct time, their vision can be deteriorated uh, uh, with time and they can go, I mean, sometimes the eyes can go blind. So it's very important to detect uh, uh, eye conditions, I mean, the, the uh, vision defects in children at the right age, say like uh, in grade one or two, so the, the latest and uh, correct it with glasses. So wearing glasses in children can uh, restore the vision and improve the vision, but not in adults. They need to wear glasses if they are de detected as having uh, breast biopia or hathalisandri at 40 years. So wearing glasses that won't heal that. They need to wear glasses for the rest of their lives, changing uh, at every two years intervals. Nowadays, there is a tendency to wear um, how do you call the the lenses uh, instead lenses. Uh, contact lenses instead of uh, glasses and uh, it has become a fashion nowadays to uh, have uh, different colors of uh, contact lenses uh, do you uh, say that uh, wearing contact lenses is better than using eyeglasses or Actually, it depends. Contact lenses are prescribed by the eye care professionals for certain conditions. People who are very, very short-sighted are prescribed with uh, contact lenses and the people who have uh, conditions like keratoconus, that means the, the sh changing the shape of the cornea, they are prescribed to wear uh, contact lenses, not uh, eye, the, the, the conventional eye glasses. And uh, the, the problem with contact lenses is that the, the lenses have to be maintained very carefully and if something happens say like when we, when you are if you walk outside or we are we are exposed to a lot of dust uh, with the contact lenses if some particle goes dust particle goes a sand piece of sand goes in between the lens and the eye the eye can i mean the, the, due to the the repeated scratch the, your cornea can be damaged and you you end up with a uh, ulcer or a wound in the eye so wearing contact lenses is good uh, to to restore vision but you have to be very careful that they are maintained very well and you are ensuring that you have to ensure that your eye doesn't get damaged and the same same principle is applied for this fashion contact lenses you have to be very cautious when you are wearing contact lenses not to get your eyes damaged because I see that there are two kinds of contact lenses, like permanent or uh, where you can, it's removable. Yes. So, and uh, we, I see that uh, among the cataract uh, patients, they replace with a permanent uh, contact no, lenses. No, no, they are not contact lenses. They are, they are two different things. Contact lenses are all, all, always removable. They have to be removed always. The, in, in regular basis, daily basis, they have to be removed, cleaned, stored in a uh, speci speci specified solution and uh, wear it again. Cataract lenses are not contact lenses. Uh, they are implanted in the eyes with an operation. With an operation, we, we cut into the eye, we remove the lens with cataract and we implant a plastic lens in the eye that is a cataract lens. Cataract, we, we call intraocular lens. So that's a different thing. How injury to eyes and occupational hazards can be prevented? Yeah, actually they, we, we are seeing a lot of people who are workers in, in say like uh, in the factories, in the roadside, uh, uh, as roadside workers and different uh, the people who have, who are handling chemicals, they get uh, their eyes injured while they work. And uh, in our country, the occupational hazards, especially to eyes, are not uh, not considered as very important thing. In some other countries, they are very particular about that they have to wear uh, uh, the eyewear when they are working. So, so wearing eyewear like goggles and spectacles and uh, getting aware of what are the 
uh, occupational hazard, occupational injuries they can get in their specific working environment, environment will help to prevent occupational hazard. So to prevent occupational hazard, the, the uh, employee should uh, be aware and the employer should be aware and sh- the, 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 in general the, the community has to be made aware what occupational hazard can be and how they can be prevented by simple measures so as a, a very 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 common example is the the people who are doing uh, welding and iron work with these angle grinders and welding machines they they, they usually they get uh, injuries to their cornea the black part of the eye with small pieces of metal they they come at a very high velocity and get buried in your in your cornea then it's very difficult to remove them and the, you can have a permanent vision loss so by wearing a simple goggle you can prevent all these you being a community ophthalmologist and uh, you are the president of the association of community ophthalmologists in sri lanka and you also working uh, in a uh, uh, community uh, eye care center called Karuna. Uh, and you also mentioned, Doctor, that uh, we need, our people need to have access to this type of eye care and uh, health sector. What, um, let me ask you finally, what, what is your scope in that and how do you uh, get engaged in promoting these areas and helping the, uh, the rural area um, people to get access to the health? Yeah, it's a problem in Sri Lanka and many more, many other countries with with the similar socio-economical condition. In Sri Lanka, we have around uh, 50 eye units, government eye units, in uh, uh, located in different part of the country. But uh, they are in main cities. So, like in in any district, when you are go, when you go to the rural areas, there is no access to eye care. Basically, they have to uh, travel sometimes more than 100 kilometers to access. Uh, place where eye care, eye clinic is available. But through our organizations, what we do is we access, we go to their locations. We uh, we arrange, we arrange eye clinics at the at most peripheral part of the parts of the country and we go there and we see patients. We, we take necessary equipment and we take patients, we see patients and detect what they have. Uh, most commonly they have cataract blinding cataract those uh, some people uh, we, we, we find many people who are both eyes blind of cataract what we do is we, we shortlist them and we take them to a place where we can do operations with uh, the help of eye surgeons and we do the surgeries and we send them back there to their homes as non-blind people so they we are improving their uh, I mean quality of life and everything is done for free for the patient this morning in Coffee with Dan, I was joined by Dr. Asela Bedira. He's a specialist in community ophthalmology uh, and he's a community ophthalmologist attached to Ministry of Health. He's also the president of the Association of Community Ophthalmologists of Sri Lanka and secretary of the Karuna Trust or the Karuna Community Eye Care Center in Maharagama. Thank you very much, Doctor, for joining today's session of Coffee with Dan. Thank you, Dr. Dan. Thank you. And I will join the listeners again tomorrow with another interesting topic in Coffee with Dan. Mm-hmm.